Hi everyone and welcome to the Girl Spring Podcast. Uh, my name is Lindsay Gardner. Hi, my name is Bella Gentry. <laughs> my name is Jossie Peterson. My name is Myra Richardson. My name is Elizabeth Orleo. And today we will be talking about the difference in between appropriation of cultures and appreciating cultures. So does anybody have any like major things that they want to start with? Or like does anybody have like a really strong opinion they want to start with? No? Okay, well, I can go first. Um, one of the reasons we picked this is because it is Halloween. And one of the big things that people like to do during Halloween is to appropriate people's cultures, which is not the best idea. Um, like for example, a Native American costume or like like something that's like really inappropriate and just overall not cool. Do we want to go around and share our worst costume experiences? That seems like a fun idea. Um, I could go first. <clears throat> um, I think this happens a lot because of just like people are ignorant to the fact that they're appropriating cultures. Um, just are unaware of that fact. But my um, little sister, she's like, I don't even think she was two at the time, um, but someone in my family was dressing her up and they, uh, they put her in like a kimono, but it wasn't right. Like it wasn't styled correctly. And then they put her hair in a bun and then put chopsticks in the bun. And we were like, you can't do that. And they were like, but she looks cute. And we were like, it's still not good. Yeah, no, that's absolutely awful. Anybody else want to give their wonderful little stories? Back on that, one of the like biggest cultures that's like appropriated, like, all the time in the culture like media all you just see lots of like a like asian in general and mostly like japanese korean cu cultures getting extremely appropriated everywhere you look and it's really disturbing <laughs> i just ugh. yeah i agree with that and i think it also has like a lot to do with like asian fetish better that that is the you know fetishization or uh, not sure if I'm saying the word right but I can't get words out right now but yeah a lot of that happening in recently and it's been happening and it's not really brought there's not really a lot of awareness brought towards that um problem so yeah yeah no you said it right I just wanted to say that you did say it right with what you guys are all saying. I think it stems from just kind of like an American Americanization of those cultures. Um, I think the situation we have here in America is so unique just because it is such a melting pot of so many different cultures. But since there are so many cultures and since so, everybody is so different, that leads people to kind of make assumptions and not really look into a culture. Like, I feel like like Disney movies, people think of Asian culture and they think of the kimonos or um, like the samurai, and that just really is not true. If you did any research looking into those cultures, you would see that um, that's just really not all that is there. It's so much more rich than that, and I think that um, Americans, especially around Halloween, tend to just kind of like paint a surface level picture of different cultures, and there's just so much more under the surface. It's not just this bland one size fits all that we tend to kind of associate with these cultures. Yeah, I agree. And I also think that on a certain level, it's not appropriation anymore. It's just flat out racism when you don't educate yourself on people's uh, cultures and you choose to dress up as them, like wearing a like sombrero and wearing and using, I can't remember the word, the, the shaky things, maracas, is that? Maracas, yeah, like that's not appropriate. That's feels a bit racist. And like, I just feel like there's some different ways to like combat it. And one of them just plain educating yourself. And if people don't do that. It's honestly a bit sickening. 
because it's just like the fetish fed you're right Jossie this is hard fetish fetishization Ooh, look at you going yes sir um but (laughs) yeah no it's really disgusting and inappropriate and it's difference in between being three and not knowing any better and your sister putting something your parents putting something on you and being like 22 and wearing something because you think it's sexual you know what I mean like there's a there are just many things that are disgusting about how we treat other people's cultures. And I know we're trying to appreciate them, but there's a fine line and we often dance it. So with that, there's like this like weird thing with like the Japanese schoolgirl outfit, which is just uh it makes me uncomfortable every time I see it. Like, first off, you're like sexualizing a children's school outfit what (laughs) um that's just disgusting I just oh and like you just see a lot of that it's really just weird yeah it's it's a lot like coming up a lot more now and like Josie was saying especially with like Asian cultures I think it's because like it just it's popular now you know like uh, people are starting to catch wind of K-pop. Certain animes are getting a lot of, um, like, a lot of attention and all that kind of stuff. And then some people just like take it out of hand. Like I've seen so many things where people will get like go to the point. This isn't Halloween costumes anymore, but like go to the point of like getting plastic surgery and saying that they identify as another race. But that's not how things work, <laughs> right? Yeah, I just think it's like a trend at this point, you know? Yeah, no, I think you're right. Um, It's, it's, I think it's just because people think that other people's cultures are so beautiful that they want to appreciate it in their own way, but they're not appreciating it. They're just making people feel bad. Uh, Jossie, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. I think um, I think like what Maya was talking about with people getting plastic surgery and stuff, it's not even like plastic surgery that people do. Like, you know, I see on TikTok a lot people getting called out for like Asian fishing and black fishing, trying to like accentuate uh, like like their eyes for Asian fishing. Um, to make them look more Asian. And it's like, it's honestly confusing because we have so many resources, like the internet is like available for us to look and research and realize that it's a problem. And the fact that people stay like willfully ignorant is like really baffling to me, so yeah. That's like, there's lots of things with people uh, like cosplayers dressing up as anime characters, which first it's completely fine, but then people will come after a person of color of do- for doing a cosplay of an anime character. But how is it okay for a white person to dress up as the Japanese person when a black person can't dress up as the Japanese person? Like, it's just so weird. And that's like like a weird thing in that, like, especially like anime cosplay community, which I've seen. It's just it's strange, like a really weird thing to get mad about. Yeah, I don't know a lot about cosplay just because I don't do it personally, but um, I have noticed that um, people often get mad with other people when they dress up as like a certain character. Like, for example, like when like you're just like a black character and you're not black and it's like, well, as long as they're not doing like black, you know, like things that are like inherently black, like, you know, like wearing something inappropriate like black face or something like it's usually pretty like you can let your child just as tiana like i promise it's okay you know and bella you were trying to say something yeah i think what you guys are all saying is great and i think it kind of brings us to a discussion of like how do you accurately incorporate aspects of another culture into your own um kind of daily life and how do you kind of mix cultures um, because it's not inherently wrong to say, oh, I like this aspect of Asian culture and I want to kind of incorporate that into my life. But I think people just often go about it um, in an irresponsible kind of way. Like, 
I mean, I think it's great that people, you know, are celebrating K-pop and like anime and things like that. Like, it's great to have that kind of cultural connectivity. Um, but I think that people are taking it too far. So I think it would be nice to just kind of like discuss ways that we could go about it in a more respectful way and just incorporating cultures and celebrating cultures and however we interact with others within our own, if that makes sense. Um, and I wanted to add, um, because I do, I do do cosplay and there's like, it's not even a fine line. There's a difference between cosplaying someone like with a different skin color than you, but when you like paint yourself that color, that's a, that's a whole different thing, you know, just like, and I feel like people should have the common sense to know that. It's different from like painting yourself blue because the character you're dressing up has, has blue skin. But if you're just trying to be a whole nother race, thinking that it's a costume, you know, I, people should just know that stuff. There, that makes me think about something one of my friends who does cosplay said it was, um, it's okay to dress up as any character of another race as long as you're not altering your appearance to look that race. Yeah, um, I definitely agree with that. My sister does a lot of cosplaying. It's just, it's really crazy. Some of the stuff that I see sometimes, like how people think it's okay to like paint themselves a different race or try to like, not even like painting, but like getting really heavy tans or something like that. Like trying to look a different color than what they actually are. Yeah, which is not okay. Yeah, just like a rule of thumb, no one should be questioning your race unless you're just like naturally like, you know what I mean? Like if you're naturally like, like, I, like there should be no question, you know what I mean? Like it shouldn't be like a, oh, I didn't know you were making me doubt that. Like that shouldn't be a, it shouldn't be a surprise unless you just happen to be a little bit darker or something like that, you know? It's really scary the length that people will go to and how much uh, as we as a society will allow people to will alter themselves and not consider it an issue. Um, like I've seen some really weird things and I, the fact that we as a society let people do that gives me a bit of, gives me a bit of anxiety, I'm not gonna lie. Same, but I think that like whenever I think about a lot of things, I always get encouraged, for example, by the fact that we're having this conversation, because there are um, people who understand how these things are offensive and are educated on, you know, not doing it and avoiding it, and we can spread that awareness. So, like, the fact that it's happening, yeah, it does get me anxious, like, come on, y'all, it's not that hard, but also we have the power to tell them, that, you know. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. And the fact that like we being as young as we are, like we're only in high school, we're only high schoolers and we recognize that it's a problem is definitely like a sign of progress. And even like the fact that people are calling out, you know, different celebrities that are like have black, have done black face in the past and addressing it as an issue. I really like that that's the way our society is moving towards calling people out and discussing the issue instead of just like shying away from it. Speaking of, I thought of a really good example. Um, when Disney released that Maui costume and it like, <laughs> the sleeves and the legs of the costume uh, were like the shade of Maui's skin and had his tattoos and stuff on there. Um, and people were like, yo, we can't wear that. It's the fact that we immediately called it out. That's what gives me hope. Yeah, no, I definitely think we're doing a lot better. And one of the ways, I just want to say, one of the ways that you can at, figure out if something is inappropriate to like a culture or like a specific race 
look it up or ask somebody. Um, I know not everyone's willing to answer questions, but some people are. And so just simply be like, hey, is this appropriate? And chances are, if you have to ask, it probably isn't. But, you know, it's still a nice thing that you can ask and be like, hey, is this appropriate for me to do as like someone who isn't Asian or someone who isn't Hispanic? You know, that's a, good, that's a nice thing to do. It's always important to ask, you know, is what I'm doing appropriate for my race and is it an issue or like inappropriate? So, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point, Lin uh, Lindsay. I actually have like a story about that. I was, um, so one of my friends had an Arangatram, which is like an Indian ceremony. And she was like, you know, you can wear a sari if you want, which is um, like a, tradi a tr traditional Indian dress. And I was like, I was really scared because I didn't want uh, anyone to think, you know, I was appropriating or anything like that. So like, yeah, just asking and if, yeah, I mean, yeah, just asking <laughs> to make sure it's okay is like, don't be afraid to ask, you know, it's always important to do that. Yeah, I completely agree. Oh, Sorry. Sorry. You can go. Thank you. Um, I think that kind of ties into the idea of like, you need to research something if you're going to physically represent it on your body for others to see. Like, it's just like you wouldn't represent a political party on your Instagram or wear a political party, you know, like merch for a candidate or um, vote for somebody if you hadn't researched about them and if you hadn't looked into it. You shouldn't do that um, because you're misinforming yourself, you're misinforming others, and you're just painting a bad picture. In, in general. So I mean, it's the same thing for physically representing a culture. If you're going to wear um, like a story or something like that, if you're gonna, um, if you want to try and celebrate um, maybe Asian culture, like with your clothing, do a little research, actually dig into that to make sure that you're accurately representing um, what you're wearing to others. Because if you misinform other people, it just creates a larger problem that other people are going to have to fix, and it's going to just create more of a mess in society regarding the issue of a culture and appropriation. Maya, I know you were going to say something. Do you want to say it? Oh, yeah. I was just going to add on to what you and Jossie were saying, like um, asking questions. There's not, there's absolutely nothing wrong with asking questions. And I know like it can be embarrassing or scary or like you feel stupid asking or something like that, or you think that whoever you're asking is gonna get mad, but it's way better to ask than to do it and offend somebody. I'd much rather you come and ask me, even if it's a stupid question, I'd rather you ask me a stupid question than do a stupid thing, you know? Is I think that that's a really good point. Yeah, and also this isn't a really like about appropriating cultures or anything, but I have seen problems with Halloween costumes that people try to do, like people try to dress up like prisoners or like homeless people. And it's like, that's very, that's not good at all when there are people actually like struggling with homelessness and people, you know, in jail. And yeah, I just wanted to point that out. Oh, definitely. And like people who dress up as like a sexy priest or a sexy nun, like that's somebody's religion. You can't, you can't sexualize someone's religion. You can't sexualize someone's culture. It's morally incorrect. Even if you don't practice that religion or the culture or whatever, it's not, it's just not appropriate. It's just like a sexualizing an anime, like a, a Japanese schoolgirl's uniform. That's a child. You can't sexualize children. That's it's pedophilia you can't do that like it's just i don't understand where the confusion is honestly yeah um i was at i went to spirit halloween like multiple times as well and there was only one costume in the adult section for made for women that was not sexualized and i think i think it was a nun costume but like the fact that in these days a female can't dress up 
buy a costume like as a police officer or something and not be sexualized. Like we shouldn't have to scour the internet or stores to find a costume that's not, you know, skin tight or shows a bunch of cleavage. Yeah, no, and I also want to point out, it's okay if you want to dress like that, you know, but not everybody does, and there should be options for both sides, so, like, there should be some that are a little bit more showy for people who want to do that, and there's some that are a lot less showy, people who want to do that, there should be, like, a wide variety of all kinds of costumes, and there just isn't, that aren't, like, either appropriate, like, they're, like, inappropriate, or they're just too sexualized, or just not it all together. Right. And that's even a problem. Like when I'm searching up, as I'm trying to find something to be for Halloween, well, actually, like I've, I've just decided what I wanted to be like a few hours ago. But like when I was trying to find something and looking up what I wanted to be, I always get these like hyper sexualized images and I'm like I, you know why does that why is that the first thing that shows up and it's very frustrating yeah I just kind of have to kind of making my own costumes just because it's just kind of uncomfortable to go in a store and like be forced to look at all that and kind of measure yourself up to those kind of standards of like this is what you should be wearing but really that's you're dressing up it's a holiday and there shouldn't be these like standards to be like sexualized on like a children's holiday essentially it's just kind of ridiculous and i think that's a whole nother discussion about how society tends to sexualize women but like i mean halloween's a prime example of that um and halloween costumes just are kind of ridiculous um so yeah Stepping away from Halloween costumes, I know this is like a huge thing in schools. It happened in my school and it took from when I was in preschool all the way until when I was about to graduate from that school in uh, seventh grade when I left to go to a different school um, uh, where they would have us like during Thanksgiving dress up as Native Americans or in, they would call us Indians. They gave us Indian names and then like they we had to like collect feathers to put on our like hats and then they had to sit on the ground and eat food <laughs> it was just uh and like it it for they're still doing it now and but there was a guy uh I'm not gonna say his name but he goes to the new school that I go to now as well and he actually spoke out against it and he sent out this like sheet of paper that he made explaining how wrong it was and they did nothing they changed absolutely nothing and it was just why is this a thing in schools why yeah we definitely should be dressing as native americans for thanksgiving considering the cult the um the uh, what is it called the history with that and how that actually went and um, I'm lucky the, the little school that I went to, we never dressed as Native American people. We always dressed as pilgrims. I never understood why until I learned the actual history of it. So shout out to that school. Um, I didn't understand it, but she knew what she was doing. <laughs> yeah, at my elementary, we also had the same problem as Elizabeth's school. <laughs> like it was bad and we, the thing is, they gave us an option. They were like, either dress up as Indians, as they called it, or pil or pilgrim, and then we would have like, a, I don't know, air quotes, recreation of the Thanksgiving feast. And yeah, it was it was very bad. And looking back on it, it's very like scary that that was happening. So yeah. Speaking of. Something that infuriates me in textbooks to this day is when they refer to Native American people as Indians. Like it, I was reading an assignment for history and the passage referred to them as Native Americans. And I was like, oh my goodness, finally a text that gets it right. And then afterwards said Indians, like 
we know the correct term. Why are we still sticking to this when we all know that it's wrong? Well, I actually read that the reason that they do this, this is completely off topic, but the reason um, some of them actually prefer it, like, you know, like re, like rebranding it, um, but it doesn't mean I'm going to use it. That just means that I know some of them, as far as I've heard, use it. I don't know exactly how it works, but yeah, history books are wrong. Point blank. Shouldn't be doing that. frustrating just how glossed over the whole like Thanksgiving deal is like from Columbus Day to um like the Thanksgiving feast it just picks up on the highlights and not even real highlights like at Columbus Day like that's wrong like that's just not how it went down um but it just picks up on the highlights and it ignores every other like war that took place between Native Americans and colonists and just everything that went down and none of that is talked about yet a feast between Native Americans and pilgrims is and it's just it's kind of ridiculous and it just kind of really shows the appropriation of Native American culture. Jossie, what are your thoughts on this? Um, I just, I just, um, my, my history teacher now, she, she doesn't use Indians, like, the only time that she uses it is, like, whenever we're talking about an act, like, you know, the, there was the Indian Removal Act, and, you know, that was what it was called, and, you know, whenever they made the, the passing of that bill so I mean and I think that's great I think that we're a lot of and a lot more teachers are starting to go, go from the incorrect sayings to saying Native Americans which yeah that's really great in my opinion the biggest problem is that the ones that are changing it are mostly like teachers that are middle school to high school level and what we're feeding to young, like innocent children is the other things. And I'm sure there are some good teachers out there that aren't doing this, but there's a lot of them that are. And then those kids grow up believing that until someone tells them that it's wrong. And that can take a while. And then they have to unlearn what they've been taught. That's a really great point, and I never really thought about that way, but, but but you're totally right. Like, elementary teachers, and my mom's an elementary school teacher. She teaches kindergarten, and she, she tells me about how many of the teachers use the wrong terms and how it's like a constant struggle to get them to say the right, the right thing. And, yeah, those kids are being taught the wrong stuff. And once they get, like, if they do get a teacher who says it the right way, they're probably still going to say it the wrong way just because that's what they're used to, which is really sad. Yeah, and that's what feeds into the cultural appropriation that we're talking about. It's the, the lack of education in systems as, like, in school systems as well as just personal education. Because even if your school system doesn't take the time to educate you, which most don't, and that's not a good thing, but we could still take the time as like our own, like our own people and like as a society to educate ourselves by just like two clicks of a button and a few clacks of keys. Um, literally just like what's appropriate to do, like what's the difference between appropriation and appreciation? Like it's not hard to look these things up. And so, yeah. I also wanted to mention about um, teaching children when they're growing up the wrong things. When they are old enough to understand and they have to be re-educated, like Jossie mentioned, you're also like ruining their childhood. And I'm not like blaming the people who are re-educating them. I'm saying the fact that they're educated in that way in the first place 
like all those supposedly happy memories of doing these things and you realize how wrong it was when you get older kind of sounds better to just save them of that allure that I did that as a child, you know? Yes, yes, that's a really good point. And it's like, and I see a lot of people now, like it's so hard for people to just like admit, you know, that was not a good thing that happened when, you know, it's not their fault. They were children and they weren't told any better, but they still think, you know, if they say they're wrong, then they're being attacked or something like that. And that's also a thing with like Confederate flags and th things like that. People are like, oh my gosh, my it's my heritage or whatever, but it's just offensive and wrong. <laughs> Yeah, I remember when I learned the truth about a lot of America's history, I looked up at my teacher and I was like, they lied to us as kids. They literally lied to us. And then this girl was like, would you rather than like tell us all this terrible stuff when we were younger? And it's like, no, but I would have rather than not lie to me. Like you can tell a washed down version of the truth when you're kids and it can still be nice enough. Like we don't have to lie to children. And then have to reteach them later and like help, like, because I still feel lied to in the, in the system. Like, I feel like the education that I gave was like a scam. Like, no, it was not a scam. I feel like the information that I was given was false. And having to relearn it all is mind boggling and confusing because I can't, it's hard to comprehend the fact that like everything that I learned was like half truths. Um, yeah. As my current history teacher uh, would say, alternate facts are taught to so many children. It's just, honestly, such dark history shouldn't be taught to kindergartners. It should, you should honestly just use the correct terms when asked questions about it or when you're doing a small, like a one week thing about it. And then later, maybe fourth, fifth grade, that's when we'd start doing like American history and stuff, you can really talk about this and start telling the truth to these people instead of either lying and telling this super, like, like this bad version of it using wrong words and, oh, they were so happy and all that. And it's also better than telling them, like, about it's all the murder and all that. So it's just like, you need to find the balance. false narrative for kids um just kind of like glossing over like american history for instance when they grow up and when they actually learn that like they're going to be like wow this world is so much more messed up than i thought it was and that's going to be a really kind of bad frustrating moment of like having this false reality for so many years and then it's just kind of like this jolting realization that there's a lot more going on here there's a lot more wrong with my country than I was told. There's a lot more wrong with this world in general than I was told. And now kind of up to my, me and the rest of my generation to fix it when we weren't even talked to about it to begin with. I agree with Bella. And it's like, we, it's not like we should tell kindergartners like all the nitty gritty details of the horrors of colonization and stuff like that, but we shouldn't glorify the details either. Like, I feel like we went to a whole like different side when we should have just not done that. Yeah, I agree. Some things are just easier to not bring up than to wash over and like say almost like it, just like not tell the truth about it. Some more wonderful stories from my old school was in fifth grade. It was like a big build up to fifth grade because in fifth grade, there was a recreation of the civil, civil war on the quad where everyone would come around and half of the kids would be Confederates and half of them would be the Union and they would fight with water guns. And people would, these poor little children would sit and watch this and we would like call them the confetti cakes and onions and it just it I'm embarrassed 
for myself and for all of my friends and for all the kids that are going to end up doing this later, that, no. <sighs> you old school just has one test to tell after another. Wow. But yeah, no, schools have a history of doing that. And it's not fun. But we also got a bit sidetracked from our original <laughs> from our original thought. Um, so we should probably wean back in on that topic. Uh the difference the difference between appropriation and appreciation of cultures. So yeah. So any final thoughts? I mean, I think we should just be aware. That's the biggest thing. Just be aware of what you're doing and don't be afraid to like branch out and find out if what you're doing is offensive or not. Yeah, and the best option is to just ask a question. Ask somebody, you know, hey, is this offensive to your culture? Or do you think this is wrong for me to do? Like, it's not it's not terribly hard to do and it's really important that you don't hurt people's feelings in the process of trying to make like a Halloween costume or something. Actually, just to like not be scared to interact and delve into another culture and to like um, celebrate that culture, just make sure that what you're doing is actually celebrating it and not um, poking fun at it or just kind of taking at it or taking things and transforming it into your own ideas just make sure you're not kind of like americanizing it or um glossing over it in a way that is offensive um but it's good to celebrate other cultures and it's good to mix um cultures and interact with other cultures because that's how we form a connection in our world that is so like, divided but it's only going to make it more divided if you do it in an irresponsible way so just make sure you're not offending anybody um but don't be scared to branch out because that's really essential. Horrible. Um, if you're not like, also remember, if you're not in a place to t ask someone a question, you don't know who to ask a question. Google's free. The internet, you have access to it. Find reliable sources. They do exist. They're hard to find, but when you find them, they're very helpful. All right. Thank you, everyone, for listening to our podcast and please don't hesitate to check out the Girl Spring website where we have a bunch of articles and I'm sure there's one like this topic or close so you should definitely check out the website and we also have other podcasts that you guys should check out uh, thank you